when we look at this model of atherosclerosis, now we begin to have that aha moment that yes, I think we're onto something. That's why when we change the diet, that's why when we made you lose weight, that's why when we gave you fiber in your diet again, we did something to you. This is huge. How did we get to this point? Where did we go wrong? Hello everybody. This is Dr. Jamdadis from Cardiovascular Interventions in Orlando. And I'm back again talking about atherosclerosis, inflammation in the body, and what causes this inflammation. And like my preliminary lecture that I gave, that was the introduction. So today we're going to go and do a deeper dive into what is it? What are the mechanisms of inflammation? And very important, this came about kind of backwards. We knew that if people started eating non-processed foods, foods that have all the fiber in them completely as nature packaged it, and if patients stopped eating so frequently, so that again, as nature planned it, you should be eating intermittently, occasionally, time-restricted feeding, and intermittent fasting, we found that these patients were doing great. All of a sudden, we notice that the weights come down, the liver, fatty liver goes away, the sugar diabetes goes away, the hemoglobin A1C comes down, not by 0.3, like I showed in my previous lectures, but by 3.0. We can actually reverse diabetes, and the mental fog seemed to get away, and the joint pains got better, the stomach problems also got better, memory got better, sleep got better, and we talked about the hormonal effects of hyperinsulinemia, and the benefits that you get from that, but there's more to it than that. And today I'm gonna to show you that all those changes that you all have made have solid scientific basis for it. And it's very complicated. It's to do with the microbiome, the gut that is very important because there's so many bacteria in the gut. Uh, there are trillions and trillions of bacteria, probably more than 100 trillion bacteria in your gut. The question is, did you know that? Why are they there? What, what are they doing? Just passing time in your gut? 10 trillion to 100 trillion. 10 trillion human cells, 100 trillion bacterial cells. What are they doing over there? They got to be doing something. And they all have a genome. And this genome can change and mutate every day. So there's something more going on with these bacteria. And that's what today's talk is going to try to get into, the mechanisms. Now, we talked about this a little bit last time, and I told you about lipopolysaccharides, LPS. So let's talk about that. LPS, lipopolysaccharides. Those are found on the bacterial wall. So the bacteria that are in your gut, they, the walls contain lipopolysaccharides. Now, these lipopolysaccharides should stay inside the gut, but instead what happens, they get into the bloodstream. And here's the blood bloodstream here, and they get into the circulation, and they get into it because the gut, which is made up of cells, have gaps in them that can be created by the lipopolysaccharides, and they make a little hole in it, and they get right through. They're not supposed to get through. So we're going to talk about the health of the gut that should prevent these bacterial products to get into the bloodstream in the first place. But number two is, if you have too many lipopolysaccharides from the wrong bacteria, the wrong kind of bacteria, the wrong kind of bacteria, then you're going to have a lot of LPS. So that will lead to increased LPS as well. See, the concentration of LPS will go up. Then the leaky gut will allow it to come through. LPS it's, itself can also break the lining of the gut. Also, certain foods do it, and certain chemicals do it, additives do it, and so do artificial products in your diet. They punch holes in you. Even non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents punch holes in it. Which other agents? Artificial sweeteners do it. And if you have a wheat allergy or a wheat protein allergy, they can also punch holes in the gut. But stress can make holes in the gut as well. Just simple stress alone can make your gut more leaky. So the bottom line is the wrong kind of bacteria we need to concentrate on, the leakiness of the gut we need to concentrate on, and then the LPS gets into the circulation. 
And when it gets into the circulation, the LPS, as we said, cannot free float inside the bloodstream. So what does it do? It attaches itself to the LDL molecule, the LDL. That's the cholesterol molecule which you all know about, low-density lipoprotein. So when it knocks off a cholesterol piece from it and it takes its place, now the lipopolysaccharide takes its place, now you're going to create small, dense LDL. And you know from my previous lectures that that's been linked to atherosclerosis. So you see, this is where my interest is, is that this LPS causes this, which causes small dense LDL, which causes ather atherosclerosis. What else does LPS do? LPS does a lot of other damage. So let's go through that. LPS also goes to the intestinal lymphatic system. These are lymph cells over here. What are they doing there? T cells and B cells, that's your immune system. Well, because they are the border patrol, they are to make sure that these guys stay here and they don't get into the circulation. So the immune system, 70% of the immune system is in the gastrointestinal tract because that's the real border and the patrol is done by the immune cells. So these are T cells, B cells, and of course there are also other kinds of immune cells over here. So this LPS, which is a, a not a good molecule, goes and it can actually stimulate these immune cells. So these immune cells will then start producing molecules such as interleukin-6, uh, tumor necrosis factor. These are inflammatory cytokines. You've heard this word, cytokines. Inflammation. Inflammation. When a patient gets COVID and succumbs to it, it's because there's an overwhelming cytokine storm. Too much of this inflammatory process, which overwhelms the body, causes intense vasodilation, shock, and then the patient demise. So, too much inflammation. So why is this? Because it's, it sees that the LPS is a foreign material and then there's stimulation of the immune system. So this is the immune system being overstimulated by these products that get inside. So it does cause an immune problem as well. What else does, was, uh, does this uh, LPS do? Well, LPS can also, in its circulation, affect many parts. It can go to the liver, and in the liver, it causes fatty liver. Because of all this inflammation is coming into the In the muscles, it will cause insulin resistance, which you all are familiar with now. I've been talking about insulin resistance. So when you have bad, bad things going on in your gut and you're getting stimulation, the immune system is activated, the liver becomes fatty, and the muscles become resistant to insulin as well. So you get insulin resistance. When you get insulin resistance, what, what happens? When you get insulin resistance, all the bad things, the weight goes up. And blood sugar goes up. You're basically getting metabolic syndrome. Triglycerides go up. And the HDL comes down. All these are markers of atherosclerosis. This is what's going on. Also, these molecules all circulate in the brain as well. And in the brain, they cause immune activation in the brain too. So you have your astrocytes there, you have a microglial cells, you get a breakdown of the, of the blood-brain barrier, and it causes inflammation in the brain as well. And that results in, of course, symptoms such as mental fog, depression. Depression is associated with atherosclerosis. We know that. Patients who have heart attacks, there's a 400% increased incidence of, of depression as well. And the depression is, is the symptom of inflammation in the brain. We now know that depression is not just a psychic thing. No, it's not. It's an inflammatory condition. The phenotype is a depressive affect. But there's actual inflammation going on in the brain. Too much inflammation. To that matter, even the myocardium, the heart, in congestive heart failure is inflamed and you have immunocytes in the mu muscle of the heart, myocarditis. So you get this low-grade myocarditis in patients who have this, causes a stiff left ventricle. 
In congestive heart failure, you all know that you have systolic dysfunction and diastolic dysfunction. Diastolic dysfunction means that the heart doesn't relax properly. It's, it's too thick or it's too stiff. And the reason? Because the muscle is infiltrated with inflammatory cells, inflammatory molecules that causes it to be stiff. Same way as the brain is full of inflammatory cells, your liver, a fatty liver, full of inflammatory cells. The fat that you see in metabolic syndrome, which is mostly in the viscera, if you did a biopsy of it, almost 50% of the weight of that fat is inflammatory molecules. So fat is not just fat. There's good, healthy fat, which is under the skin, for example, in some people, and we call them obese, healthy, because they don't have any of the markers of inflammation. But when you have inflammation causing obesity, which I showed you the you can, these patients have mostly the fat is in, this, in the stomach area, in the viscera, and in the liver, around the pancreas, you do a biopsy of that fat, 50% of the weight is inflammatory cells. So just think about it. Why is that the case? Why is it? Because LPS, lipopolysaccharides, getting into the bloodstream, they actually get into the, into the fat tissues as well. So when they get into the fat tissues, the body says, wait a second, this is a foreign material, this is a bacterial product. So it mobilizes all your immune cells to go into the fat cells to trap it. That's why the inflammatory cells are there in the fat. So this is inflammatory fat. Metabolic syndrome causes inflammatory fat. This fat is sick. It's full of immunocytes interleukin-6, tumor necrosis, and these are just two of them. There's actually a whole myriad of them inside the, the, the fat cells. So this is an inflammatory process. This is not just simple obesity. And that's why it is so linked to atherosclerosis and heart attacks. Patients with fatty liver, they get heart disease. Patients with inflammatory fat, mostly in the, in the belly, they get heart attacks. Patients who have depression, have inflammation associated to this, they get heart attacks. Patients who have insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, get heart attacks. So when we, when we look at this model of atherosclerosis, now we begin to have that aha moment that, yes, I think we're on to something. That's why when we change the diet, that's why when we made you lose weight, that's why when we gave you fiber in your diet again, we did something to you. What did we do? We got the LPS down. How did we do that? We must have healed the gut. What else did we do? We changed the bacteria. We must have changed the bacterial population. Oh, so you repopulated my gut with the right bacteria, and you fixed the lining of my gut. Uh-huh. Mm. So therefore, I'm not getting systemic inflammation. I think you're onto something right there. So this model, this model that I'm talking about, this is huge. How did we get to this point? Where did we go wrong that all this started happening to us? So it starts in the gut. Hippocrates said all disease starts in the gut. So this model helps to explain the modern epidemic that we have. What's the model epidemic you have? You don't have cholera, you don't have typhoid, you don't have smallpox, you don't have all those diseases, uh, dysentery and, and typhoid. Those are all gone. But we've replaced them with low-grade chronic inflammatory diseases. These chronic inflammatory diseases include coronary disease, atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis is one of them. Depression is another one. Mental illness, neurocognitive dysfunction associated with, with even Parkinson's, mobility disorders. In the bowel, inflammatory bowel disease, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, okay? small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, reflux disease, diverticulitis, all associated with the changes in our diet and inflammation, joint diseases, autoimmune diseases, rheumatoid arthritis. Now, we recognize starts in the gut with autoimmune disease. So we are now realizing that there are so many chronic conditions that are afflicting modern man all because of the wrong stuff that's going in the gut and we didn't understand how, but we are now beginning to understand that it's the bacteria and the lining. And that's what's resulting in all these immune and hormonal changes. 
of which atherosclerosis is one of them. So if this is the case, our next portion of this talk is going to be, what can I do to heal my lining? What can I do to heal my bacteria over here? And how did my bacteria get so bad? So that's going to be this next portion that I'm going to talk about now. If you like this video, then this one is strongly recommended for you. But if you want to see the whole series, please click here.